I hear the stories of my younger brother coming back who's been sniffing coke off strippers' tits for the last half of those many years, and you're prepared to kill the fatty calf. There needs to be some period in your day where you remember that there's a world out there trying to tell you who you are, and there's a world in here that's trying to tell you who you are. Now, where do you want to put your eggs? Because the world outside is very noisy and very tempting, and it has all the razzmatazz, it has all the tinsel and all the glitter. It's got all the toys. But that's because you don't think you're enough in the first place. Ah. If you don't think you're enough in the first place, the whole idea of the world to sell you stuff is, first of all, they have to make you feel bad about yourself, less than in some way. And I don't resent this system, by the way. It is the system. What's the expression about don't hate... Don't hate the, the player. player, hate the game. Don't hate the game. Love the game, because you're in it, mate. Mm. So own the game, accept the rules, and move on into the rules. So the world will try and tell you who you are, and you have to tell yourself who you are. And there's this ongoing battle. And somehow there needs to be a reconciliation between the two. But in the end, you've got to have all the eggs in your basket. Now, this is a very rock-solid philosophy. Is this something you've ever written down? It's what the essence of narrative... I'm a storyteller. The essence of narrative is only about this dynamic. There is nothing else in a story other than this dynamic. I'll give you an example. The prodigal son. So there's a father. He has two sons, an older son and a younger son. And he says to them, who wants to spend their inheritance? The younger son says, me, Dad, I'll go and spend it. And the younger son takes all the dough and he runs off and sniffs coke off strippers' tits for a number of years until he realises this is getting pretty boring and I'm in a lot of trouble. He ends up feeding, throwing food to pigs. That's his job. And he can't even eat the food that he gives to the pigs, at which point he says, Dad, will you take me back? At which point, Dad goes to the fatty calf, says, kill the fatty calf. Older son says, hold on, Dad, what's going on? I've stayed with you since the beginning. I've been loyal to you. And I hear the stories of my younger brother coming back, who's been sniffing coke off strippers' tits for the last half of those how many years, and you're prepared to kill the fatty calf. What's the SP, Dad? I want to know the story. He says, you're all right, son, don't worry about that. You take a little step to the side, you'll always be with me, you're a good boy. At which point he goes out to meet the prodigal son, the wasteful son. The wasteful son returns. And he says, you were lost and now you're found. That's the end of the story. It's quite hard to make sense of that in a literal sense. You go, oh, dad was a bit unfair and you should have been kind to the older son because he never ran off and did anything. But the essence of the story is that you are the father. You are enough. Your older son is your intellect. He says, oh, don't do this, don't do that. He's trying to reconcile, make sense of a prosaic and material world. The younger son, being the wild, feral entity that he is, wants to go out in the world and find out what it's all about. So in his recklessness and sense of adventure, he finds that he can't escape himself. So he has to return to himself. And at which point, he has to accept who he is which point the intellect is left out of the equation pretty much as the older brother because he can't understand the significance of the journey of the wasteful brother. In the end, you have to leave yourself to understand the value of yourself. You're enough, you're always enough, but you've got to somehow prostitute yourself before you realise your own value. That is the essence of all stories. That's deep, Guy Ritchie.